Hi and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I'm going to show you how to use Newton's second law to solve various problems involving pulleys and inclines. And I'm going to show you a, a methodology that should help you solve any problem no matter how easy or how difficult it may be. And we're going to start off really simple by a simple pulley situation here where I have two masses hanging over a pulley. And the first thing you need to do is always label the forces on acting on the block. Well, first of all, we need to know the masses we're dealing with. So I'm going to make this one equal to 3 kilogram. I'm going to make this one equal to 5 kilogram. Yes, I know this is a smaller object, but let's say it's made up of lead here. And I'm going to predict which way I think it's going to move. And so I'm going to establish what I am going to take as the positive direction. So I'm going to work at the acceleration and I'm going to assume the positive direction is in the clockwise direction. So the first thing you do is label all the forces acting on each of the blocks. Now, of course, the three kilogram block has a weight hanging down. So it's force acting downwards is equal to three G. I'm going to leave the units off for the moment. The other force acting on it is of course the tension which is going to be upwards in this direction. Similarly, the five kilogram block has its own weight acting down which is going to equal to 5g and the tension is going to be up and since pulleys only change the direction of the tension, the tensions here are the same. The next step is crucial and what you basically do is write out Newton's second law for each of the problems. And Newton's second law, of course, says that the net force of an object, Ma, is always equal to the sum of the forces acting on that object. That's what this big symbol means, the sum of. So let's start. So I'm going to first deal with the three kilogram block. And so its net force is automatically equal to 3A. The two forces acting, assuming it's moving in a clockwise direction, is that means this is going to be a positive because it's in the positive direction and that's going to be in the negative direction. So I'm going to get T minus 3G. Similarly, I'm going to get 5A for the 5 kilogram block. Its two forces are 5G. That's the positive one because it's in the direction of the clockwise direction minus T. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. One is acceleration, one is t. The next step is you simply add them up. So I get 8a is equal to, and lo and behold, you'll see that the t's cancel out in this case. So I get 5g minus 3g, and that of course is equal to 2g. So it's clear now that the acceleration is simply equal to g divided by 4 and of course, G is 9.8. And so I'm going to get a value of 2.45 meters per second squared. So there you have it. That's the acceleration. Now, if I wanted to work out the tension, of course, I would simply substitute that value into one of these equations and I can work out T. I won't do that now because I want to concentrate more about this type of problem. But you can see that's how you would solve it. Now, let's have a look at this situation. A slightly different situation. In this case, we have an object that is sliding on top of a plank. And for this example, I'm going to make this a frictionless surface just for simple mathematical sake. Again, we need to know the values we have here. And I'm going to make this problem where I'm going to say, look, this is five kilogram, but this mass that's hanging, I don't know. I'm going to call it X. But I do want this to accelerate at a rate of one meters per second squared. So can I work out X? Well, the procedure is the same. Work out the net force for each of the objects. So we have 5A is equal to, well, the only force acting in the direction of motion here is simply the tension. Here we go, I must make sure I label the actual forces before I go on, and this is gonna be equal to XG. So 5A is equal to tension. Over on this side, you can see I have XA is equal to XG minus the tension. Again, when we add that up, we get A outside of 5 plus X is equal to XG. Because A I already know is 1, I can see I can get 5 plus X is equal to XG. And if I isolate X, I end up getting x is equal to 5 
over 9.8 minus 1, which ends up being 8.8. .8, and therefore, I get 0.57, rounded to two significant figures, kilogram. So there you have it. That's the mass that this needs to be if I want this to accelerate at 1 meters per second. See the procedure? Work out the net force for each of the objects, and then it becomes a simple simultaneous equation type problem. Now we step up the problem, and now I have a 2 kilogram mass, a 3 kilogram mass, and a 1 kilogram mass, and I want to know what are the tensions in these ropes. And now we have two tensions. So we have tension 1 and tension 2. Again, if we label all the forces, we have tension 1 acting this way for the 2 kilogram mass. We have tension 1 acting in that direction for the 3 kilogram mass. Tension 2, of course, is acting in that way. And of course, we have tension 2 acting upwards here. And finally, we have simply 1g acting downwards here. Again, we're ignoring friction here. And we'll deal with a frictional problem shortly. Again, 2a is equal to t1. 3a is equal to t2 minus t1. And finally, we have 1a is equal to 1g minus t2. Again, I'm assuming, of course, it's going in that direction, which is a fairly safe thing to do. If I add that up, you can see I get 6a is equal to, now of course the t's cancel out, and I get g, and so therefore the acceleration ends up being 9.8 divided by 6, and I'm going to get a value of 1.63 meters per second squared. If you then substitute that into these equations, you can work out T1. T1 ends up being 3.27 newtons, and T2 ends up being equal to 8.167 newtons. Again, it's just a simultaneous problem. Now let's step it up. So now I have an incline, and by adding wheels, I'm going to say that the friction again is negligible. And I want to know what is the acceleration of this system, assuming that the angle here is equal to 45 degrees. Now there's a couple of things you need to understand. First of all, is that the actual force on this block is acting downwards, but the actual component acting down the plane is only one small component. So the amount of weight acting down the plane, which is in the direction of motion, is going to be equal to the weight. Now we have, in this case, going to have a situation where we're going to have a 2 kilogram block over here and a 3 kilogram block over here. So the value, of course, downwards here is 2g. But the component we want is 2g sine 45. Now, if you're not sure how that's determined, watch my video on the normal. I, of course, have a tension that is going in that direction, a tension here that's the same value going in that direction, and I have a 3g acting downwards. You know what to do next, right? You now just do Newton's second law. So we have 3a is equal to 3g minus t. The other one, of course, is 2a. And now we have t minus 2g sine 45. And when you calculate that out, you end up getting an acceleration. When you substitute, when you cancel that out and you add it all up, you're going to get an acceleration of 3.1 meters per second squared. I won't bore you with all the mathematics. You understand that once we get to that step, it's simple to solve for acceleration. And of course, I can then go back and substitute back the A value into one of these equations to allow me to work out T. But now let's get a little bit more complex. And in this case, I'm going to combine a couple of things. I'm going to say, OK, I've got an incline and this is still 45 degrees. But now I'm going to say there is a frictional force taking place here. And that frictional force is going to be the kinetic frictional force. And you should remember that the kinetic frictional force, and again, I have a video on friction. I suggest you watch that if you're unfamiliar with friction, is equal to the coefficient of friction, or in this case, coefficient of kinetic friction, multiplied by the normal force. Now, the normal force here is not coming straight vertically upwards. It is coming off at an angle that is perpendicular to the surface. And so we now 
need to label all the forces acting on each of the blocks. And again, I'm going to use two kilograms over here and three kilograms over here. And the question is this, if the acceleration here is equal to one meters per second squared, can I work out the coefficient of kinetic friction? First of all, of course, we need to label all the forces. This is 3G and this is T. This is also T. And then we have two forces acting down the plane. The first force acting down the plane is the component of the weight acting down the plane. And we understand that to be already to 2G sine 45. That is simply the weight, regardless of whether friction is there. We're going to assume this is moving, so there is a resistance to this motion that is due to the kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction is the mu naught value, which we're looking for, multiplied by the normal. Now, the normal is this component here, and that is equal to mg cosine 45, or in our case, specifically, 2g cosine 45. That is the normal component perpendicular to the surface. And so now this is going to be equal to mu 2g cosine 45. We've now labeled all the forces and now we're in the position to do the mathematics. So we have 3a is equal to 3g minus t. We have 2a is equal to t minus 2g sine 45 minus mu naught multiplied by 2g cosine 45. When we add that up, we end up getting 5a. Now remember 5a is 5 because a is 1. So we get just 5 is equal to 3g. Notice the t's cancel out minus 2g sine 45. Now the sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Or you could say that is equal to root 2 over 2. So I'm going to simplify that. Since I have now 2g multiplied by root 2 over 2. Okay. Minus mu naught. And again I have 2g multiplied by root 2 over 2. I chose the 45 here because the mathematics makes it really easy. We now get 5 equals 3g. Now the 2's cancel out, so you get minus root 2g minus mu multiplied by root 2g. Now comes a simple calculation and a rearrangement. So we know this, we know this, we know this, and then we can just simply rearrange for that mu. Try this yourself. But if you do this, you get a mu naught value of a value of 0 0.76. And there's the coefficient of kinetic friction for this situation that would cause this to accelerate. Yes, this is a little bit more complex, clearly. But I again want to get you to understand the process. Set out Newton's second law for each of the objects and you can then solve it. So even a problem like this shouldn't be too hard. Now I'm going to deliberately make these values. So I want to show you how the determination of your direction really isn't a problem. So I'm going to make this the positive direction and I want to know the acceleration. Again, I know I have three objects and I'm going to make these equal to two. I'm going to make this equal to three. I'm going to make this equal to uh, one. And I'm going to deliberately do it that value like in that situation. And I want to know what is the acceleration. Now the force acting down this plane, of course, is equal to one G sine. Now what's the angle here? We're going to make this one equal to 60. We're going to make this one equal to 30. And so sine 60 on this side. And of course we have a tension acting this way, but of course that tension is one of two tensions. So we're going to equal this to tension two. So this will be tension two as well. This, of course, depending on your perspective of the masses, this is going to be tension one. In this case, we have this tension acting downwards, 
but we also have a force in this direction that is going to be equal to this weight acting down the plane. So that is going to be equal to 3g sine 30. And this guy also has a value of 2g sine 30 down the plane. In this case, we have no friction. Let's write the equations out. So starting from this side, we have 2a is equal to tension 1. Remember, this is the positive direction minus 2g sine 30. Now, sine 30 is this half, so we just get g. The second equation is equal to 3a, which equals we have t2. We have t1 subtracted, but we also have to subtract the weight force down. OK, so now we have 3g sine 30. Sine 30 is a half, so we get 3g over 2. Our third equation, which is this guy, 1a is equal to 1g sine 60. So that's going to be g multiplied by the root 3 over 2. That's the value for sine of 60 minus the tension 2, like so. And when we add those equations up, you can see T1s cancel out, T2s cancel out, and you get, and I'm going to write it up here just for the sake of space, I'm going to get 6a is equal to, now we start up here, negative g plus negative 3g over 2 plus g root 3 over 2. Now if I work that out, I get negative 16.0 and of course the acceleration is now going to equal one sixth of that which is going to equal negative 2.67 meters per second squared. What does that mean? It simply tells me that my determination of what is the positive direction was incorrect so it's going to actually go in the opposite direction at 2.67 meters per second squared. You can then substitute this into these equations to solve for T1 and T2. Be careful, however, if you get a value of negative 2.67, then use that negative value for these equations. Do not make it positive and then substitute this in. You'll get incorrect values for T1 and T2. Use the original equations. You need to use the original acceleration you determined. In any case, I hope that has helped you understand how to solve pulley problems and incline problems and a combination of both using Newton's second law. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.